Just the fifth meeting all time between Syracuse and Georgia Tech is underway. There'll be no return from Leary. And here is Haynes King, the son of a high school coach, son of John King, the head coach of the Longview Lobos. Tim, who is really good at touchdowns, but also has a lot of interceptions. Yeah, the turnovers are the killer, but the touchdowns have been impressive. He's a very good quarterback, plenty of ability. I think oftentimes he sees things well, but he certainly has put the ball in harm's way too often for the Georgia Tech offense. Jamal Haynes in the backfield with him. Here's King with a toss. He'll come here to the near side, does Haynes. And he'll get three. Marlowe Wax wraps him right up. The middle linebacker, the junior from Baltimore. And Jamal Haynes, of course, is here. Three 100 yard games in his last two games 32 carries, 223 yards, and a touchdown last week at Clemson. Haynes again trying to find something on the left side. And Tim, there's Justin Barron's first hit of the night for the Orange. You know, he's listed as kind of a, a secondary player. They call him a rover, but he just finds the football. You see him, he's just going to come from the left side of your screen and pack a punch with him. He definitely is a guy that is around the football a lot. Georgia Tech 46% on third down. They were 6 of 16 last week at Clemson. Empty set for King. Up in the pocket, now works his way back and going to tuck it and run. Has the first down. Will cross the 40 before he's finally taken down out of the secondary. The linebacker, Leon Lowry, dropped off into coverage at the 13-yard run. Good decision by King. Just a three-man rush. So you don't have to be crazy in terms of that clock in your head of having to get rid of the football. And then little known fact, pump fakes, even after you pass the line of scrimmage, still work. <laughs> Here's Haynes left side and firing down was Lowry again. He got just enough of Haynes to get him down before he got to the 42. So it'll be a loss of one. You know, unless we talk about coming off of a rough performance a week ago for Haynes King, sometimes a run early in a football game makes you feel like you're already in the flow of the game. Gonna put the previous week behind you. There's an empty set, two to the boundary, three to the field for King. Syracuse brings five. First catch of the night. This is Eric Singleton Jr. And he'll be turned away at the 48 and a half by Barron. So it'll be third down, about three and change for Georgia Tech. And Dante Smith will come into the lineup for the Jackets at the running back spot after Singleton makes his 39th catch of the year, taking the lead momentarily from Malik Rutherford. Third and short. That's Rutherford in motion. King looks, pumps, shoots it. Blaylock the catch in stride. Into the secondary where Clark grabs him. At the 36, 37 of the orange, Elijah Clark got a hold of Dominic Blaylock on a 15-yard catch. It's a nice route by Blaylock getting inside. And then how about Haynes King? Could hold it earlier, but gets the ball out quickly. And then anytime you throw an in-breaking route, give the receiver two chances to catch it. Once with his hands, once with his body. That's what King does. They pick up the first down. 14th catch in the last six games and change. And here's Dante Smith trying to get the ground game going. He'll pick up a couple to the 34. Braylon Ingram, transfer from Alabama, is the first guy in an orange helmet to reach Dante Smith from Spring Hill, Tennessee. Who comes into the ball game, the third leading rusher for Georgia Tech in just his fifth game of the year tonight. Jack gets working tempo. This is Rutherford or Leary, beg your pardon, the star of the Miami game, and another Georgia Tech first down. Kevin Jobody finally makes the play, but not before Christian Leary, whose only catch that night in Miami was the game winner, makes the first down yardage. Well, and Leary and Rutherford, you know, two players that do a good job of working inside in the slot. And then you see the run after catch that Leary is capable of. Kings hit his first three for 32 yards. Toss to Smith, trying to ride a block to the far side, does. He'll get thrown out of bounds. And that was Stephon Thompson at the 21-yard line. Pick up of right around four on the play. This is a fascinating defense to work against if you're Syracuse. It's, it's interesting to watch all the pieces move. And it's a hard defense to go against. They're active. They kind of uh, can be disruptive in your front. They typically get a lot of negative plays. And then they have good linebackers 
that fly to the football and get you to the ground. And so this is part of the reason why this drive so far for Georgia Tech has been so impressive. Luke Benson has come in as a tight end. Pistol set for King here on second down. They're going to flip it to Singleton, trying to get wide here at the near side. Rides a block to the 15, and then his turn back right there. Jason Simmons, the transfer from New Mexico State, as Luke Benson, the former Syracuse tight end, was trying to pave road here. Well, pave road on just a little touch pass. Just another way you get Eric Singleton, probably the most dangerous Georgia Tech player with the ball in his hands, an opportunity, and then good perimeter blocker. So Brent Key's team, 11th play of the drive coming up here. First and 10 off the orange 15. Bunch look to the left here for King. Quick throw on the perimeter, catch in stride by Haynes, but look at the blue shirts. Now Haynes going to reroute. Oh, makes a move. Jamal Haynes at the five. Jamal Haynes a touchdown. had Haynes dead to rights Tim but he wasn't cashing that check they just overrun the play they do a great job of getting out to the swing screen but it's Jamal Haynes ability is to use his speed and his quickness first touchdown catch of the year for Haynes meanwhile Haynes King 25th touchdown pass of the year and he was perfect on the drive it's perfect on the drive, and he gets perfect help from Jamal Haynes. A lot of speed on this Georgia Tech offense showing off so far tonight. You're right. We're coming off of a rough week a week ago, off to a great start. Daryl Gill, who's only had five kick returns, will field one here at the five. 20, 25, Gill breaking through 30, and runs over a man who holds on to get Gill on the ground out at the 38 yard line. So here comes the orange and what do we see offensively tonight. Well 392 last week Tim. I mean they, they want to run the football with how they're constructed in terms of health at quarterback and I think we're actually going to get the first play of the game with a tailback yep, taking the snap from behind center. Yep, Garrett Schrader's got his helmet on, but he's standing on Dino Baber's sideline. And here is LaQuint Allen, who is the fourth best rusher in the ACC at just under 80 yards a game in the Wildcat. Two tight ends. And here goes Allen to the left side, and he bounces off one and will squeeze out two, maybe three on the play. Kyle Eford. One of the linebackers makes the play for Georgia Tech. Now the Jackets have gotten ready for this, Tim, in a unique way. Brick Key basically told us our goal was to get our best tacklers on the field for what they're doing. Yeah, some size. So looking at guys inside, we'll see a lot of Zeke Biggers and Horace Lockett inside. And then Clayton Powell Lee, who's kind of typically a safety, you know, playing a little bit of corner. Yep. So here's Allen again. That's Bellari in motion, 89. They're going to hand to Allen. And... Kyle Kennard wraps up with Quinn Allen, shy of the 45. And Kennard to stop. You see what Syracuse has tried to do so far is you know spread you out, make you defend players by getting them out in the formation, and then try to run the Quint Allen inside. Now it looks like gonna have. Dan Valari in yep. the backfield with him. Yep, here's Valari with Allen. And they're going to hand the ball to Allen, trying to get to the near side. Got tripped up and then got hammered shy of the first down by Mawala, the linebacker. And just to give you an example, they had a reserve quarterback on the field, they had a defensive lineman in that package as well. And they currently still have. A reserve quarterback on the field, and they don't look like they're planning on punting this football. Nope, do not. Fourth and short. LaQuint Allen again. That's Davis, the quarterback in motion. Allen will talk. He's got the first down. He'll break the 50 to the 49. So is Dino Babers and Jason Beck thinking here, 
we can't burn a possession tonight. We've got to maximize everything. I think they're looking at it. I mean, almost it's going to sound silly in a way, but almost like high school football. If you don't have the ability to throw the football, fourth and ones, you know, aren't something that you're intimidated by in terms of maybe going for it, especially with all your options in terms of ball carriers. Here is Valari with Allen behind him. He will hand to LaQuint Allen. Who picks a spot and does a pretty good job getting to the second level? And look for some context. I know we had the rushing numbers up there, you know, what they did a week ago, but you're talking about 28 carries for the Quint down. I mean, and he's gotten a lot of work so far. We got Braden Davis, who's a backup quarterback, who's lined up in the slot. Yep. Obviously, Schrader on the side of the field, but LaQuint Allen once again in the backfield now this time joined by another running back. Yep that is Jawan Price who's back there with him. That's Davis the quarterback in motion and here goes Allen trying to find a seam bouncing here to the near side does a good job he'll get the orange first down. Allen the ball carrier. And one of the things I do think is interesting about having Braden Davis a quarterback in the personnel grouping is you can't just not cover somebody. Because if Jason Beck, the offense coordinator for Syracuse, sees that you're not covering somebody, well, then go ahead and, and get the quarterback behind center. And now Ike Daniels is coming the ball game. He's wide here to the left side, where he's joined by Omari Hatcher. And Valari going to throw, and this is Daniels the catch. And he will be turned back shy of the 30 yard line. So Ike Daniels, by the way, who has only played now for the second time in the last nine games makes the catch. And Valeri, who played quarterback, looks like he's put on a, some bulk in the upper body. He doesn't quite have the upper body flexibility he once did as a quarterback, but he can do that. And he did it a week ago where he throws these wide receiver screens so that, look, you have to defend all 53 and a third wide. He's going to keep the ball, and Valeri the first down. So it's a West. Those two plays right there are exactly the challenge that this, you know, presents. Valari can throw it outside the numbers at the line of scrimmage, and you're defending wide receiver screens. You've got to get out there to defend that. But you also have a 200 and probably 40 pound tight end that can run downhill power runs, which is what he did on the very next play. Damian offered the wide receiver in the slot to the bottom of your screen with LaQuint Allen, and then you see the bunch look at the top. Featuring the quarterback Davis. And they'll throw it to Davis now. He'll make the catch. And LaMiles Brooks will take him down, but inside the 20 at the 18 of Georgia Tech. So the Orange is having some success now. Kevin Shears' defensive challenge. We said their run numbers are not great defensively, and Syracuse is executing hey, again. I mean, and we're throwing the football again with, with a tight end that's got two gloves on, and he's throwing it to a quarterback. I mean, with. Like what they've done right now is Garrett Schrader, who played a week ago and was doing backflips on the field, has yet to enter the ball game. Tenth play of the drive for LaQuint Allen down the Wildcat on second and short. And he will keep it to the right side. He'll break the 15, and the Orange has got it first and 10 at Georgia Tech's 12. And Tim, inside four minutes we go here. The Orange have had this football a long time. They've had it almost six minutes now. Yeah, and this is the type of stuff, especially when you're playing a good offense, which Georgia Tech has, is why you say, hey, look, we are going to go for it on fourth and one, and we are going to be content with these long drives. So it's first and 10 at the 12. And Allen. Who has Valari and Mang, the two tight ends around him? There's Davis, the QB. Allen trying to work into space, now in trouble and taken down. It was Kennard that kind of closed the angle from his defensive end spot. And part of what the challenge will be is to not have negative plays for Syracuse. So Kennard basically making the tackle for a yard loss. That is a big deal. And especially when you get into the red zone now where look, it's condensed. And so timing of any type of passing game, especially with no fear of people running by you, is much more difficult. That's Allen in motion. They're going to hand it to him on the sweep coming here to the near side. It's LaQuinn Allen. And he will score, but there's a flag thrown. And now we've got a Syracuse player blocking a Georgia Tech player all the way to the brick wall 
here on the west side of the stadium. And it looked like Damian Alford was caught up in the holding call. And there may have been a little more once they got into the bench area. Well, Alford, I think, actually initially gets a great block. And honestly, he's getting such a good block, but he then, as the as the Quinn Allen goes past him, doesn't let go. And then he drives him literally all the way into the stands, Wes. I mean, he drives him basically into the first row. Adam Savoie, we've not heard from tonight, but we're getting ready to. Our referee is assigned by the Atlantic Coast Conference. All right, you want to see right to the right side of the screen. There's the hole. The, the block originally was good. Hands are pretty much inside, and then it's that turn that's a problem. Right. And if we stay here as Allen goes out of bounds, just keep your eye on five blocking number one. There's the flag for the hold. And then I think, you know, Jalen King, and I don't know that it was seen because of the other distraction, but a late hit on Allen by King. There are two fouls on the play, both by the offense, holding. Number 17, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, second down. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 17. That 15-yard penalty will also be enforced. So it's not on Damian Alford, it's on Umari Hatcher for the other guy who was blocking on the perimeter. It was the block that like, literally went through the, the sideline and into the first row. Wow. Either way, listen, for how Georgia Tech, excuse me, for, for how Syracuse is running offense, staying on schedule is really important. And I mean, it's like second and forever. Second and 31. And Allen again to work on the perimeter. Dodges two tacklers and will get to the 25. And That's seven yards or almost eight yards for LaQuint Allen. Yeah, and the key for Syracuse now is just to make this the easiest field goal you can possibly make it. They obviously aren't able to throw the football. Kenan Johnson is shaking up for Georgia Tech, as is Jalen King. We'll get a break in Atlanta. We pick up the phone because... Now it's got to lock down, yeah, Tim. They do have to lock down. That was a really cool moment, though. Here is Valari now on third and 24. Snap to him. He's going to run the football. Tries to bounce outside, and Georgia Tech's there. Eddie Kelly and Kyle Kennard again. Boy, Kennard has seemingly been able to pick up on some of this. He certainly has. And I think when any time the, these runs get spilled, especially with a runner like Valari, who doesn't have the same type of speed that Schrader or LeQuinn Allen have, that's going to play into Georgia Tech's favor. Brady Denneberg's longest field goal of the year is 46 yards against Army. That was indoors at the JMA Wireless Dome. This is 44 yards to put the orange on the board. Kick from Denneberg is good. So Brady Denneberg's 10th field goal of the year. No Garrett Schrader so far for the orange. Don't expect to see him now. But Syracuse on the board trailing four in Atlanta. Leary from the goal line will bring it out 10 15 and boy got hammered as he reached the 20 yard line. Don't forget stay tuned with us full coverage from Atlanta tonight post game. The ACC huddle is here tonight on the post game edition all the week 12 action in the ACC highlights analysis and much much more stories from around the league on the huddle right here on ACC Network. Dante Smith in the backfield to join Haynes King. Ball at Georgia Tech's 20. And this will be Smith on the carry. 
and he will fall forward for a yard. Stephon Thompson makes the tackle. He missed most of a year ago with injury. 21st career start tonight for Thompson in his 35th game. Jack gets again in tempo. Second and nine and almost caught. Rutherford on the reach back. Might have gotten tipped at the line of scrimmage on the way to Malik Rutherford. So now all of a sudden third and long for Georgia Tech, whose defense just spent about eight and a half minutes out there. That's exactly where I was going, Wes. You know, third and ten now with a quick three and out after your defense probably is trying to regroup a little bit based on what you saw with how Syracuse is operating on offense. Really need your offense to pick up a first down. First incomplete pass of the night for King. Now in the pocket. Here come the orange. He'll throw back. It is caught by Smith, but he's taken down by Thompson at the 25. So the ball will be put right at the 25, and that might be the final play of the quarter. And Georgia Tech could gladly run this first quarter clock out. Kevin Shears working that whiteboard overtime down in the defensive huddle on the Georgia Tech sideline. And I and I think the awareness of that by Brent Key, he just told his punt team, like, just sit tight for a second. Let's take the quarter so the defense continue to talk to each other. There you go. 7 3 after a fast 15, and Atlanta gets us started on ACC Network Primetime. Auto Owners protects your home. Brown, who has two punt returns for a 19 and a half yard average. And this is David Shanahan toward Brown. Fair catch asked for and taken at the 36, just in the nick of time. So pretty good field position for the orange as Valari comes back onto the field and how did we get the touches well 10 of them for LaQuint Allen four for Dan Valari in the opening drive and there was a mixture as well of who was taking the snap from behind center which I think creates problems for George Tech in terms of what they're expecting to get defensively one thing I would say is with LaVar Valari taking the snap more likely for him to be the thrower on a wide receiver screen out to the perimeter. Ball at the 36 and LaQuint Allen straight ahead. He'll get almost four before he's brought down. And look like Zeke Biggers getting up off the bottom of the stack. Big 330 pound junior from Salisbury, North Carolina. But Kevin Shearer said pretty good athlete. He'd, he'd be surprised. We've done enough Georgia Tech this fall to confirm he's not a bad athlete and there's movement and Tim here's the one thing you can't have if you're Dino Babers in this operation. Get behind schedule right and I think they get a little flinch on the shift false start offense number 50 five yard penalty at second down. That's on Reed the center Taylor. After that last drive and that last carry for LaQuint Allen, he was grabbing his right leg, and I see him right now lined up outside, still continuing to grab at it, wincing a little bit. So keep an eye on that right side for the running back slash quarterback slash receiver, LaQuint <laughs> Allen Jr. Well, and Jawan Price has joined Valari in the backfield here. And Valari going to keep it. And got stacked up. I think that was Eford, the linebacker, 44, that hit. Valari. You know, we're going to give Tim a lot of credit here, Taylor, because he said in our 7.30 hit tonight, Valari looks a little bit like Larry Zonka when he tucks it and covers it up now. <laughs> that, that play right there looks a little bit like the Oklahoma drill. I mean, yeah. basically, we're going to get in the shoots here. We're going to lead with the fullback, and here we come. And now when you get to third and ten, you just have limited options. And the guy taking the snap from center is wearing number 89. Valari's two for two for 11 yards and he'll throw here on the perimeter and it is caught by Brown who is tackled from behind by LaMiles Brooks at the 39 and Syracuse will have to punt the football away I believe and it looks like the orange will punt and you can see once again the passing game right now for Syracuse looks like this basically Valari taking the snap from center and throwing some type of perimeter screen. Now you would have to think they have to have something off of that and they would probably get to it on an early down to have a way to get to an explosive passing play. Jack Stonehouse the latest of the Stonehouse family of putters 
toward Dominic Blaylock, and Blaylock tried to make a move with it at the 18, and really good coverage by the Orange. Caden Bailey, whose dad was the former Bulldog, Boss Bailey, on the stop for Syracuse. Greatness is a feeling. Blaylock, who, by the way, transferred from Georgia. And who do the Jackets play next Saturday night? I think they play the Bulldogs. Wes. Right here, yeah. McDonough, McElroy, Molly McGrath will be here for that, Tim. Here's a play fake by King. Looking again, now going to step up in the pocket and outrun Okachukwu. He got nine, and then, boy, got really hit by Lowry, the linebacker. I think he's right on the mark at the 28 for the first down. It's a really good decision by Haynes King. Hard play action. He's trying to get a deep curl. He's trying to get this deep curl here, but look at the underneath coverage play so soft. And because it's soft off of the play action, he doesn't have a throwing uh, lane. It's Marlo Wax doing a good job. So quick decision, take off and run. Nice pickup for the Yellow Jackets. Pistol set. Here's Haynes trying to get the ground game pushed along and does. Picks up three on first down. Got tripped up by Kavon Darton. Now he wears zero. Right there he is. Tim, you're fascinated by the 5'11", 271 pound defensive tackle slash zero technique here. You know, he's just in a land where there are a lot of 330 pounders playing inside. You know, if someone at 5'11", under 275, as disruptive as Darden is, it's impressive. Start. Offense, number 12, five-yard penalty at second down. Dominic Blaylock, the move on the perimeter, first penalty of the night against Georgia Tech. So like the Orange, Georgia Tech gets behind schedule here. Now second and a dozen, and Darden goes off with Lockett. And they have no problem digging into the depth of Syracuse in Rocky Long's 3-3-5. So Quez has come in to play in that defensive line. Here's King looping it, and it's intercepted. Ball is picked off by Isaiah Johnson, the Dartmouth transfer. There is a flag down as Johnson is tackled inside Georgia Tech's 40 at the 39. It'll be the first interception for Zeke Johnson. But hold the phone here. Adam Savoie, the referee. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense, number 80, was covered up with the snap. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is an interception. First down, Syracuse. 16th interception of the year by Georgia Tech. And a takeaway for the Orange. And I think there's confusion by Haynes King with rougher Bird. Here we go. Basically, you're going to get cover two, but you're going to see Johnson um, basically get depth. And instead of having a go route, he just has a hitch down down low here. I don't know what Haynes King is really thinking about. You have a stop route. And even if he continues on, you're just throwing it into a massive you know, kind of field of traffic when you look at the secondary for Syracuse. Here's LaQuinn Allen trying to bounce into the perimeter, and that's a great play by Tatum. Tornelius. The junior linebacker fired right through to make the play. No gain for the Orange. And the Orange bring back the heavy package now. Elijah Wright, the defensive lineman, wearing 96, is in the game with Mang, the tight end, on that left side. And this will be LaQuint Allen trying to get to the perimeter. And that time again, it is Tatum. Who set up the play for Brooks? And, Lost a two there. And Tatum's speed. Look at look at the speed of Tatum. He just gets to the perimeter. That ends up being the difference here. Basically, an outside stretch starts inside to take on a lead block, but his ability to bounce back outside, not lose contain, really big play. Allen again, the Wildcat. Valari and Mang, the two tight ends in motion. Here is Brown, and Allen wants to keep it and will be stopped. Two yards, maybe three shy of the first down at Georgia Tech's 32. As Syracuse misses on third down for the fourth time in this first half, and I think Dino Babers is going to bring Brady Denneberg out to try another field goal. Yes, and this one looking like it's going to be nearly 50 yards. 
ESPN Analytics says fourth and seven or less. Take a go here, Tim. Well, and I think with the way they're operating on offense, the fact that they just got the turnover, and the fact that this is a 50-yard attempt, I, I think I probably would have kept my offense on the field. Denneberg hit a 57-yarder in high school in Merritt Island, Florida. This is a 50-yarder. The kick is away, and it is no good. He pushed it to the right. So the interception from Haynes King to Zeke Johnson goes by the boards and it doesn't hurt Georgia Tech. Yeah, not at all. That's a try to go for the fourth there. Just think with how you're playing offense. Oh, got a quick snap. Sure did. And King and a flag down. I think we're going to have all sorts of movement here. Sparrow, the linebacker, stopped Illegal King. shift. Offense yeah. number two and 11 were both moving and never reset prior to the snap. Five yard penalty, first down. Dylan yeah. Leonard. I mean, basically, the snap comes early, and they're going to have, you know, King is, is, you know, getting a shift going, and then huh. look what happened. Weston Franklin just snaps the football. And Brent Key coming out of the timeout cannot be pleased with that type of reaction from his offense. Yep. So the ball at the Dino Babers now wants to talk to Adam Savoie. And with 903 to go, a quick conference with the eighth year head coach of the Orange. Whose team is two and nine on the road in the last three years. And that's Rocky Long, his defensive coordinator. Right there, the master of the 3-3-5. Syracuse has elected to decline the foul. It's second down. Huh. Okay. Another look. Well, what's interesting here is they should take the loss. Well, I guess King gets back to roughly the line of scrimmage. He go. gains a yard. Because it's not, you're not blowing, you know, blowing the play dead. You have the opportunity to accept the foul or decline it. And they choose second and nine. Yep. Singleton in motion. They're going to make fake the toss, and here goes King running it, and he will get near the first down as he broke the 40 on the tackle by Elijah Clark. It's a good decision by King. You guys still make good decisions in the run game. They basically have the option to throw that little pitch to get to the perimeter, or if the defense is out there on it, keep it and get inside. Quick snap hand to Haynes, and nope, didn't get it. Had to get to the 42 and did not. So Georgia Tech at third and less than a yard. Marlo Wax led the charge for the orange here, and Georgia Tech's up on the line. They're ready to go. Fourth and short. And if I'm Georgia Tech, I'm not going for this here. Back to Bjorn. And again, keeping in mind how Syracuse is playing offensively. Oh, they got him. They got him leaning. Free play for King. He's going to take the shot for Singleton. Over the shoulder. Couldn't pull it in. Covered in the secondary by Bellamy. But it looked like they got Sparrow leaning in the neutral zone. I think they definitely got Sparrow. Offside. Defense number 12. Five yard penalty results in the first down. All right, so here's Sparrow clearly in the neutral zone. And then you have the free play. And honestly, it's a great throw by Ooh. King. And Singleton, who's a great receiver, is probably scoring a touchdown if he brings that one in. Ball at the 46 now. I'm going to flip it to Rutherford. Trying to get to the edge. And boy, did the Orange play that very well. Terrific effort. Barron there first, and then Wax. If you're going to get on the perimeter, you need to, go, need to do a good job blocking the perimeter. And Justin Barron just does an awesome job. Bottom of the screen, watch him knife inside as soon as he diagnoses the play. That's really well done in space. Sure is. Second and nine. Here's King faking the toss. Wants the throw. Down the field. Blaylock caught at the 10. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. <laughs> 
Second TD catch of the year, 53 yards for Blaylock, Tim. And it felt like a bit of a bust in the coverage on the back end with Jason Simmons. That's a miscommunication which just basically turns Blaylock completely free. Jackets up 11. Dominic Blaylock. Second touchdown catch of the year. Haynes King throws his 25th. Georgia Tech by 11 in the second period. I did a transfer year here for his final two years of eligibility when I asked Rank Key what he adds to this team. He said, as much as it pains me to say this, he comes from a championship program, <laughs> so he has the mindset of a winner. He praised his maturity. He says he may not run a 4-5, but he is smart, guys. And the return by Daryl Gill is out across the 35. There is an injured orange player. That's Caden Bailey, who is down on the kick return unit for Syracuse. There is a flag as well. And typically when they are thrown back there, it is on the receiving team. They check out Caden Bailey. We take a break in Atlanta. During the return. With insurance from auto owners. Caden Bailey, who we spoke of earlier with his family connections to the state of Georgia's help from the field, and there was a call for a block in the back on Syracuse during Gill's kick return. So the Orange, who thought they might be near the 40, Tim, are back inside the 10 now. And Valari and Syracuse with their worst starting field position of the night. And he's got Jawan Price in the backfield with him, the New Mexico State transfer. And Bellari to throw on the perimeter here is Allen with a blocker in front and a lot of white hats showing up quick as he reaches the 14. And look at all the bodies. The physicality of this ball game has been on from almost the start tonight. Yeah, it's a great call by you, the, the white hats to the football. And part of it for a defensive lineman, if you know when the ball's thrown, if it's thrown within five yards of the line of scrimmage, you're pursuing. And you can tell that the defensive front for Georgia Tech is ready for that. So Valari, after a five-yard game, he and Price again in the backfield. A couple of snaps. Allen again on the perimeter will get the first down. But boy, another heavy hit by Tatum, the linebacker, Clayton Powell Lee. He and Jalen King, the leading tacklers on this Georgia Tech team coming in. He's come back to it, another wide receiver screen, same exact play and similar success. Five any way you can get them, right? And now LaQuint Allen will go wildcat here. They go tight end D lineman on the edge here, and Allen going to try and keep it right up the middle, and Georgia Tech's right there. So maybe a yard, not much more there for LaQuint Allen. Tatum, maybe the first guy there. And now Valari will go back to the, I mean, it's like being a traffic cop well, doing these games. It is, and what's interesting is just the fact that they're getting it communicated is a really nice job by the Syracuse coaching staff. Quick snap, here's Valari, perimeter throw. That's Davis, the quarterback, his first catch. And he got hammered when he caught the ball. And Braylon Oliver, the Minnesota transfer, was right there as it arrived to Braden Davis, the quarterback. And Max Mang, you know, kind of having a discussion on the perimeter about, hey, who was supposed to get this block? He ends up you know, basically saying, look, I need a little help there so we don't get Davis hurt. So third in the full 10 now for Valari. Allen with him in the backfield. They'll toss it to him, trying to get wide. And the Jackets, pardon the pun, swarming. Brooks is the first guy, and then Andre White is also there, I believe. And now a marker down post whistle. And it looked like we had a little bit of pushing and shoving in Syracuse as LaQuinn Allen is. Really frustrated with the way things have gone here in the last sequence or two. A 
Let's see what Adam Savoy and the crew have here after their confab. That's LaMiles Brooks. And there is no foul on the play for unsportsmanlike conduct. It's fourth down. So the Orange will go three and out here. Oh no, beg your pardon. Four plays, five and a punt for Dino Baber's team. And here is Stonehouse, whose brother, or whose cousin is Ryan Stonehouse in the NFL. Dad John punted at Southern Cal. Paul, the uncle, punted at Stanford. He's a Missouri transfer, and he's one of the best the ACC has. Second in the league in average. And fires this one into the Atlanta night where Blaylock makes the catch. So Jackets will get it back after the 41 yard punt. Now, Food Lions, food for thought, Tim. Well, a week ago, I think they surprised Pittsburgh. Here's Dan Villari in the backfield, and they're just running downhill runs, ISO blocks. And you see the room that they're operating with. It gets Villari with a good lead block into the open field. Now you look at tonight, it's a little bit different. Same thing. Here's your lead block. The difference is we're packing the box with these linebackers and you have extra defenders in there. So when you run the football, you run that lead play, he's being met and it's a really good job and obviously some awareness that it's happening by the Georgia Tech defense. Zach Pyron is the quarterback here for Georgia Tech. And so we get our first look at Zach Pyron as Elijah Clark makes the tackle. And now Haynes King will come back in the game. Is that Georgia Tech just saying, look, if you have more than one guy take the snap from quarterback, we can do that too? Like, I don't, I don't what, know. If, what are we doing? I don't know if Haynes King had an equipment issue, if there was a wardrobe malfunction, whatever the case may have been. Nonetheless, Pyron got a rep. Three yard run for Zach Pyron. Dante Smith flexes to the boundary side. Here's King on a quick throw and offline for Rutherford. Well Syracuse now has recognized Tim I noticed downfield here the release on Singleton and Barron was right with him. Yeah and McDonald is coming off the edge and puts a really good shot on King. He's a very tough kid but <laughs> that hurts no matter how tough you are. The old QB up here by the way flinch folks. <laughs> Maybe stand up. <laughs> yeah. Gonna just sit back down after you watch that huh. <laughs> Third down and long and Orange Crawl a couple guys up in the gaps here. Georgia Tech on third down is just two for four. There's Okachuku off the edge. Here they come. King's got to cut it loose. Does and Singleton the catch. First down at the 49 yard line against Zeke Johnson. Boy, is a rookie good. He's excellent. It's a great route and really good timing by Haynes King and then. How about the job in pass protection by the guys up front? You know, quarterback was just hit, but they do a great job. And then you see the speed and the fear of the speed from Singleton and Isaiah Johnson, who's on the coverage. Avery Boyd's into the ball game. You get a look at the rookie Singleton. They're gonna hand the ball to Dante Smith, and Smith gonna pick up five on first down into Orange territory at the 45. And there's Dante Smith. Who has had as strong a second half running the football as just about anybody else in the ACC? 45 carries in his last four games. He went for 180 and a long touchdown against Georgia, uh, against Carolina at Atlanta after not playing for four games. Second down. Leary in motion. Here is Smith again flag thrown as Dante Smith breaks the 40 for what will be a first down but penalty is thrown in the neighborhood of a potential hold on Georgia Tech. McDonald the tackle for the orange. I think it's going to be on Syracuse. Holding defense number nine. Ten yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. Dino Babers has had more than what are we talking about here looks in this first half. Yeah, I have to admit I originally was looking to see where they would maybe call an offensive hold because of where the flag came from didn't see it. And see they get Leon Lowry. Under three to go in this first half Leon Lowry and Syracuse now see Georgia Tech first and 10th the orange 30. Mm -hmm. 
Here's King. Keeps it. He's got five. He's got 10, 15. Make it 18 yards to the 12. Ingram finally gets the former Longview logo on the ground. It's a good read. It's a read play. You see McDonald come squeezing in, you know, right off the ball, going for the back. King does a good job of keeping it, and he's pretty dangerous in the open field. He's now got 3,175 yards of total offense. That's second all time on the single season mark at Georgia Tech. And now the Jackets put Janah in the ball game. Abdul Janah, the transfer from Duquesne, he'll come back here to the near side. They'll hand it to Smith and right into a wall of blue shirts. And there is Kavon Darton. <laughs> and that's like running into a brick wall when you run into him. You know, they'll move him a lot and you know oftentimes he just gets penetration because of you know the slant that they're sending him on and send him right to the hole on that play. And Georgia Tech clearly and I think some of this has to do with what Syracuse is on offense. If Georgia Tech's been going fast all night. It got around two minutes and Brent Key basically said we're going to slow this way down. Yeah. Because the orange going to get the ball to start the second half so a timeout taken here for the Jackets and let's check with Kelsey. Well West Durham you never know where you're going to end up when you hang out with Eric McLean because we're going to be with you at the half we're not going to be inside the Ramblin' Rack but Come maybe on. we should. You know what I got to say. Let's Bring go. it all down around the ACC after this Wes. All right. You guys got a lot of work to do because. Week 12 has been busy. Congratulations to Jeff Brom in Louisville, Tim, huh? Terrific season. They still have the Commonwealth game with Kentucky, the Battle of the Bluegrass next Saturday at Derby City, but heck of a performance on the road at Miami to clinch the spot opposite Florida State. And my goodness, your heart breaks for Jordan uh, Travis tonight yeah. in Tallahassee. Uh, you're exactly right. Hard to see the year that he's had, the year that team has had, really everything that he's been through. All coming up at the half with Kelsey and the gang here's the toss and going to the edge is Singleton. Travis was hurt when the Knolls were down 13 to nothing and Florida State has rallied to take an 11 point lead all details come up at the break with the huddle gang. I think Key would take a field goal but prefer a touchdown here with 63 seconds left. I would agree but King has been prone to making mistakes so if you're Brent Key I think ultimately you just want your quarterback to make sure he protects the football. Haynes is a running back. King is going to throw. Low pass caught by Rutherford trying to find a seam. Malik Rutherford toward the five and Okachukwu and Elijah Clark four and five make the tackle. So Tim 48 seconds couple of timeouts left. Fourth and a couple here. Maybe three. Yeah, I think you, you kick the field goal here, you make it a 14 point game when you do that, if you make it. Look, we've seen Syracuse's offense. They haven't scored a touchdown yet. And so I think that because of that, taking points any way you can get them, especially with the lead, I think makes the most sense for Brent Kick. Aiden Burr on the year is 10 of 11, his longest in Winston Salem against Wake Forest. And now a Brent Key timeout because the play clock winding down. So with 16 seconds left. Quick reminder to you tomorrow also the next installment of all access for you on ACC Network all access the ACC life an unprecedented look at Notre Dame women's soccer NC State's men's soccer program and Louisville field hockey not just the student athletes but coaches staff parents and fans six o'clock tomorrow night right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. The series has been terrific. You've seen certain series of all access focused on certain teams, the ones where they go from campus to campus and see different teams. You see these young people competing at the highest level. And it's a terrific inside look that our ACC Network production team brings to you. 22 yard try for so Burr here. Well, they may call it 23. So here is Aiden Burr trying to hit his 11th field goal of the year and Dino Babers is all for the gamesmanship too. 
With 17 seconds left. And it was interesting after Brent Key took that first time out. He and Chris Wanky, the quarterback coach, were talking quite a bit. And I, you know, Brent Key kind of went over to him. I almost wonder if he was maybe rethinking the idea of kicking a field goal. Your old teammate Winky litigating a little I mean, bit here. Br briefly a teammate. <laughs> yeah. Would it last a week with you guys? I mean, probably generous saying it's a full week. <laughs> five, six days. Okay. So I thought maybe he was rethinking it. And then, you know, when Dino Babers calls the timeout, you wonder who wants to revisit again, but they got the field goal team back out there. Yep, here is Burr. Right footed kicker, tight angle, right to left here to try and add three more. And the kick is good for Aiden Burr. Right through from 20 yards with 13 seconds left. And once again, these two have. Exchanging pleasantries after a score. Well, the Jacket defense has gotten some stops here, and it's our Gatorade fueling performance here in this first half. Well, you know, the advantage that Georgia Tech has had is they saw this offense against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, I think, got caught off guard by it, but. Georgia Tech has seen it. They prepared for it. And I think they've been ready for just about every look, including some of the passes that Syracuse has tried to throw at them. Kyle Kennard's been a big part of it. Really give Kevin Shear and his staff a lot of credit. Good plan here so far, Tim, right? Yeah, and I think that, you know, as we talk to Kevin Shear and he kind of finds out like hey you know last week on the bus did you see him what Pittsburgh's doing actually excuse me see what Syracuse is doing at Pittsburgh you know basically run a wildcat every play so he knew he was in for a treat here is Gill now coming off the goal line across the 25 with seven seconds left to go in his first half Syracuse is going to get the ball to start the second half so Georgia Tech will certainly Defend at least one snap here after the field goal by Burr. And the ball at the 27 of the orange. I wouldn't put anything past Jason Beck and Dino Babers here, would you, Tim? I mean, I want it, but I certainly would take a knee if, if I were that. Snap to Valari. Wants to throw it on the perimeter. Does and ball is caught over there by Donovan Brown. And that will be the final play of the first half. Syracuse had just 95 yards of offense in the first half. And whoa, whoa, hold on a second, guys. What are we doing here? Are we going to the locker room or Adam Savoie stopped momentarily? Let's see here. We're trying to get teams. Oh, they put. And Brent Key's trying to get his team the back. was out of bounds with two seconds on the clock. Please reset the game clock to two seconds. It's second down, and the clock will start on the snap. So now, two seconds to go. The clock here at the stadium shows zero. But. Somewhere there are a couple sec seconds left somewhere. Okay. And Schrader has come in the game. And this is for the victory formation because Damian Alford has dropped 10 yards behind the line. And Schrader, if anyone's wondering, you know, Schrader probably taking the most under center snaps out of right. anybody they have on the roster. That's all they're going to do is touch a knee. So Syracuse will run two plays. The clock will expire. We got the paperwork done on that half, didn't we? Right there at the end. So 95 yards of offense. And meanwhile, Georgia Tech with the two touchdown lead. And this is Gill a yard deep. Orange have been pretty good when they've been penalty free in this. And here is Gill across the 25. Ball is loose. And the Jackets have recovered it. 
Gill got hit from behind. He coughed it up, and Georgia Tech recovered the fumble. Twentieth turnover game this year by Brent Key's team. You said it, Wes. I mean, they've been pretty good in the return game, and then it's just a great job by Maui. Uh, Paul Maoa, the linebacker, number 13, covering the kick. He just rips at that football. He's able to get it out. And then Jacob Cruz, 35, I believe, is the player that recovered it. Sure looks that way. Freshman from North Cobb Christian, just up the road in Kennesaw. Timeout in Atlanta. Well, there's a look at Jacob Cruz, who got the fumble recovery after Paul Mawala knocked it loose from Daryl Gill on this kick return to start the second half. Just great hustle both ways. Great job by Mawala ripping that football out, and then you're right about just the recovery before the ball leaks out of bounds. And as we left you, KJ Wallace was the injured Georgia Tech player. He was helped from the field, but. Straight to the medical tent. Off the Syracuse 30. Here is Jamal Haynes, and he will score. Fumble by Gill is paid off by Haynes on the first swing. And a little misdirection in the backfield. You've basically got a, a guard pulling and a tight end leading up through there, and it is blocked perfectly by Georgia Tech. And point good by Burr. Jamal Haynes hits this with, with, with you know perfect feet, but basically you're going to pull, and you had two lead blockers in here, and just watch the job. The guys up front, they get movement. And then there's just a, an alley to run the football where Jamal Haynes, who you know, has just a suddenness and a burst to him. He's a former wide receiver and been impressed with him as an in-between the tackles runner. It's obviously a lot easier when the guys up front do that good of a job. Well, the fumble kickoff returned by Gill. Recovered by Cruz. And now all of a sudden it is a three touchdown gap for Dino Babers team. And Daryl Gill Jr. from Texas. Talented young freshman right back out there to take the kick again. And off the goal line here he comes. 15 20 and knocked down right at the 30 yard line. And let's check with Taylor on number 11 of the Jackets. It is pretty incredible, guys, when you think Jamal Haynes spent his first two years here at wide receiver and graciously accepted the challenge of running back this spring. Fellow running back Dante Smith says it is such a good feeling to see him go crazy out there this season after watching him work so hard over the years, maybe not getting a ton of playing time. Dante says he's a natural athlete, may not be the biggest, but he'll run through someone's face, which we saw on that first touchdown. That one, guys, a little bit more wide open for him, but pretty incredible, like I said, for a former receiver turned running back. Fifth in the ACC in rushing coming in at almost 76 yards a game. Valari, the tight end turned quarterback, and the ball is out again as he is hit at the 35. Syracuse fell on it. Looked like Jalen King was down there scrambling for it for Georgia Tech, but LaQuinn Allen recovered it for the Orange. And Valari did this a couple times last week against Pitt. He's running with the football in just a lot of traffic for a guy that you know, doesn't have a ton of reps running the football between the tackles. Ball's on the ground. They're fortunate to land on it, much like they were a week ago against Pittsburgh. That's Allen in motion. Valari will hand to Allen, trying to sweep to the far side, and there goes LaMiles Brooks. Helping him out of bounds, they're going to throw a flag because Brooks took him all the way to the brick wall on the east side of Bobby Dodd Stadium. And that'll be against the Jackets. And to be honest, early in the game, Tim, same thing happened. And it was flagged against Syracuse, and I believe Adam Savoie's group is going to ticket Brooks for the same. I 
to the play. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, laid head out of bounds. Defense, 15 yard penalty with an automatic first down. I mean, you can help him out of bounds, but you don't take him all the way to the wall. On that shove, you know, once you're into that big white stripe there, it's unnecessary, it's the right call. And see, this Syracuse offense has not gotten explosive plays because they can't throw the football. But Georgia Tech helping them a little bit with the personal foul. So the Orange are into Georgia Tech territory. Villar, a little option game now. And Allen will be taken down by Jalen King at Georgia Tech's 42 and a half. And how about Villar pitching the option? Yeah. And then at the same token, how about Georgia Tech being ready to defend option football, which is not something they've seen much of out of Syracuse offensively. Jack, it's used to be pretty proficient option football team around these parts. Here is Valari, and he breaks through. And Dan Valari toward the 30 yard line. It'll be at the 31 of Georgia Tech and a first down. Braylon Oliver, the tackle, but Tim, that's the kind of run last week where he creeps pit a couple times. Yeah, and, and got him, and that was well blocked. He hit it hard. And I, one thing I would say is if you have a gadget play early down, first down when you think it, you know, you've been pounding the football in the run game. If you have a gadget play and you can get to it on an early down this area of the field, might be the time to do it. Quarterback is behind Alford to the top of the screen here. They're going to throw it to Braden Davis, who's teeing it up, hit as he does, throws for the end zone, broken up by Clayton Powell Lee on a ball intended for Allen. And we have a flag down. At the 23. Is this ineligible? I think it's ineligible downfield. Adam Savoie waiting on Brent Key to decide what he wants to do here. It's against the orange. And some point of discussion here about. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense number 63. Five yard penalty. First down. To me, this is the most common penalty on long drawn out pass plays this year. Well, and this is you know, obviously a bit of a double pass. It's a lateral, the first one, and actually, Allen is open in the end zone. Davis just needs to throw it far, far, far enough, and it's really not, doesn't matter with the man down there. And the Jackets aren't having that. That's Amari Harvey making the play on LaQuint Allen on another pass to the boundary side that time. Kevin Shears done a marvelous job putting in this package, Tim. Yeah, and I think that for these corners, these guys, you know, covering the perimeter, you don't have to back up. There's no reason to back up. We have not seen a, a single football, you know, thrown more than five yards down the field outside the numbers. Jawan Price now the Wildcat quarterback. And he will hand to Allen, who turns the corner, and Mawala will wrestle him down. Shy of the 25. It'll be third down and about four and a half. And this is this is two runs if I'm Jason Beck, offensive coordinator for Syracuse. Because you're down three scores, how you're playing offense, two down territory. And I would go with two runs right here that you like the best. Isaiah Jones is coming to game. He'll join Davis to the far side. You've got Hatcher and Damian Alford, the wide receivers here to the right. Allen with Valari in the backfield. And the play clock down to three, two, one, and get it snapped. Valari will take it up the middle. Reroute has the first down. Still on his feet. And he'll be taken down finally at the three by Rodney Shelley and a host of jackets, but it's first and goal Syracuse on another terrific run by the big tight end. Great run, good blocking, and you have to be impressed with the operation, Wes. They get, get a look at the defense. You have a tight end. Look over to the sideline, get a new play call from the offensive coordinator to get to the run you want on a big third down. So first and goal at the four. 
And the orange. And, and not for nothing, Wes, isn't throwing an incompletion yet. I know they're at the line of scrimmage, but he's nine for nine. And they're going to snap it, and Bellari coming to the right side. There's a flag down back of the end zone. Bellari will reach in touchdown, for the touchdown, Syracuse. which would be his second rushing score if the play, the play stands. Legal substitution, defense, 12 players on the field. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. It's just more power run game for Dan Valari and you know, certainly aided by the unnecessary roughness penalty by the Miles Brooks. A little bit of life back in it for Syracuse. Absolutely. Just ahead of 10 minutes to go in the third. Denneberg's point is good. And it's back to a two touchdown difference at 24 to 10. So Dan Valari, once again, a guy who kind of had to buy in a little bit to the idea last week. Well, he's excelling with it tonight. He's on the board with the Orange first touchdown here in the third. I don't. That's a feisty team. Yes, it is. And kick over the head of Leary. So Georgia Tech is 25. Time for the New York Life Drive recap. Well, a lot of runs because that's what Syracuse is doing tonight. Obviously, LaQuint Allen's been a big part of it tonight. And then Dan Valari, a lot of times with these direct snaps, it's just been power run game. And then enough speed by Valari. He's able to use the stiff arm to get to that front pylon. Georgia Tech will take over after the kick at its 25. There's a look at Valari, who originally committed to Fordham out of uh, Plain Edge High School at Massapequa, Long Island. And now Jamal Haynes into the secondary. And the ball popped out, and the Orange have recovered. Haynes coughs it up, and Georgia Tech's committed their second turnover of the night. Out at the 41 yard line, Caleb Okachukwu recovers the fumble. And I think Marlo Wax at least gets the final punch on the football to knock it loose. And how about this just turn of events for Syracuse? You put together a productive run. You see, Wax is the last one to get the football out. And Jamal Haynes can't believe it. Well, the, it, the run was blocked beautifully. He gets to the second level without being touched, and Brent Key probably trying to console his running back. Syracuse top 20 in turnovers game this year. They're going to hand the ball to Allen, and he finally is slowed down at the 39. Gain of two Zeke Biggers. 88 on the defensive line for Georgia Tech to stop. So it'll be second and eight now. And Kevin Shears' defense, who's been playing pretty well most of the night now, has got to kind of get an extra stand in the ground here. Meanwhile, Syracuse, if you had anything vertical to throw, Tim, wouldn't this be the spot? Going to go to Allen again, trying to get to the perimeter. And he'll be stopped shy of the 35. It'll be third down at about four here yeah, and very similar West to the last third and four we had where Syracuse looked to the sideline I thought it was two down territory then I think this is as well you kind of in no man's land anyway because of the length of the field goal attempt if you don't get many yards but they were in a similar formation I would expect Valari to look to the sideline to maybe get the call the play they want to get to versus the look they're getting Orange one of six on third down. Here's the law. He's just going to run with it. And he got met in the hole. And it'll be knocked down a yard and a half shy of the first. But here again, two down territory. And Dino Babers has got his offense out there on the Eford tackle. Yeah, and I think they should be happy with that play on third down because it now it leaves you a fourth and one and a half. Certainly with the way they've been running the football, bringing big bodies into the game, Elijah Wright. Number 96 in the backfield, kind of a heavy set to the right side of the offense's formation. Yep, that's Elijah Wright. He's 280 pounds. In motion, that's Davis. 
LaQuinn Allen going to carry it, and he got knocked back. Horace Lockett was the first guy to hit him. Big 55 filled the gap against LaQuinn Allen. And I don't believe this is really where this play was designed to run. I think Dino Babers is probably having that conversation right now. But how about Horace Lockett Ooh. making a huge play after the Tech turnover? When do we go from learners? It's got Syracuse stopped after the Jamal Haynes fumble on four downs, including a terrific play by Horace Lockett on fourth and a yard and a half. And now Haynes King back to work on the offensive side, and here is Dante Smith slipping on the turf before the orange closed with Jaden Gould. You just look at how Syracuse is lined up. You got all these blockers here, an unbalanced look, and they're going to fake a fly sweep to get to the perimeter. And really, at this point, after you fake that fly sweep, I think the run is back here, not there, which is where LaQuint Allen went. Runs into Horace Lockett and obviously Kyle Eford as well. And big stop by that tech defense. But I, I really feel like there was opportunity front side. Here is Christian Leary on a quick throw to the near side. He will work his way to the 37. Look at Eford, the seven tackles. Came into the ball game with six or more in each of the last four. Now make it five in a row for Kyle Eford. Tim, is it possible with Kevin Shear? Remember, we got him in his first game as a defensive coordinator at Miami back in October. Is it possible now? Granted, this is a little different deal of cards tonight, but they are maturing a little bit as the season goes on well, under his think, design. Think back to that conversation, Wes. It was, hey, we need better effort to the football by our players, and they're <laughs> getting that tonight. There's a throw to Leary. He's in trouble and a nice play in the open space by Elijah Clark. So Elijah Clark will take down Christian Leary back at the 28. That's a loss of eight. And Georgia Tech, after getting the fourth down stop, will go three and out. And for the Jacket offense, second time that's happened tonight, then throw in two more turnovers. That's like four stops. And here is Shanahan to punt. And Syracuse has double safety return in the punt game. That ball going to hit and bounce to Allen. And he's at the 30, 35, 40. And LaQuinn Allen on the backside. Shanahan, the punter to beat. And David Shanahan got enough of him to get him out of bounds. But it's in the Georgia Tech territory at the 18. It's a short kick, but Wes, you called it. Two returners allows Syracuse to field the football. And with how they're playing offense, I think they should take every return opportunity they get. They get the football in one of their best players' hands and end up with a huge, huge swing on special teams. Look at David Shanahan from Ireland. Maybe back to some rugby days as a youth. Knocks Allen out of bounds, but Syracuse terrific field position for Valari and Jawan Price in the backfield at Georgia Tech's 18. Quick throw on the perimeter, Allen around the bubble and toward the 10. Second and short, the next snap. Jalen King, the tackle for Georgia Tech. And Syracuse, we've got an injured player. Down for Georgia Tech inside the 10. And looks like one of the big fellows is out being tended to. Georgia Tech's football trainer is Mark Smith. And get a look here. On the pursuit, he just. Well, that is sack on the way down. It's Micaiah Scott. Number eight. Started his career at South Carolina. From Gainesville, Georgia. No, it's good to see him sitting up because mm. as he kind of finished that tackle, I mean, that's a big man. Well, his head hit the ground pretty hard.
So meanwhile they tend to Scott here. And Syracuse is right back. In a second and short situation you see Dino Babers and Jason Beck kind of. Visiting on. What they want to do and of course Beck was a year ago on staff. When Robert and I came to Central New York as the offensive coordinator. And then when Anai went to NC State, Beck was named the offensive coordinator to Pinstripe Bowl and has maintained that position. And Rocky Long, of course, came over as the defensive coordinator. And that brain trust has kind of found a path to get the Orange to snap their five game losing skid last Saturday at Yankee Stadium and here tonight trying to become bowl eligible. Winner does become bowl eligible out of the ACC. So Scott able to make it off under his own power and now second and basically three here for LaQuint Allen in the Wildcat. There's Davis the quarterback in motion and here's Allen working to the left and he will have the first down first and goal for the orange at the seven. And let's check with Taylor. Yeah, guys, I know you saw Scott now heading into the 10. Earlier, we saw KJ Wallace get hurt, the defensive back for Georgia Tech. He will be done for the game after an injury to that right knee. He just took off the wrap, but it was covered in two big bags of ice. He was hanging out on the training table for quite a while. There were tears in his eyes early on, but he did start to smile. It was good to see as his teammates start to rally around him. But KJ Wallace is done. Scott is in the 10, guys. All right, first and goal for the Orange. Here's Valari. He'll keep it going to the left side. The angle there and the Jackets got to him. Did they get to him in time? Clayton Powell Lee got him out of bounds at the one. Starting to be impressed with the speed in general by Valari because it was clearly short, but a couple of these runs, Wes, he's actually bounced them and been able to turn the corner. So at the one. Second and goal, and here's LaQuint Allen with Big Perry at 280 pounds with him, and Allen just going to try and move the stack, and no go. Braylon Oliver, I think, led a stack of tacklers. And here comes Garrett Schrader in the game. Tim, you wonder if. We saw him take a snap right before the half to take a knee. If quarterback sneak is in play here, or something off of a quarterback sneak, with Schrader being able to take the snap from under center. So Schrader will go under center. Going to hand to Allen, and there's the orange touchdown. So two TDs and three second half possessions for the orange, and an extra point away from only trailing a touchdown here late in the third. Well, and just and how about Garrett Schrader <laughs> clearly the only guy who can take a snap from under center. A one yard run for LaQuint Allen. And now there is I think we're going to get a, a taunting or some type of celebration penalty after. The play. Adam Savoie. In discussion. I, thought I saw Reed the center. He and Brandon Ellison, the umpire, talking it over. Here we go. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, on sportsmanlike conduct, Georgia Tech number 55 for spitting at an opponent. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff, and number 55 is ejected. That's Horace Lockett. So Horace Lockett's night is over. Who made the stop on the fourth down play a series ago for the Jackets on defense? Denneberg, all oh, the snap, we had a problem. Stonehouse juggled it, and the next thing you know, it's now an eight point game. Amari Harvey was right there to take. Jack Stonehouse to the ground. I don't think Syracuse was up to shenanigans here. I just think there was a malfunction in the operation. I think you're exactly right. I just don't think he fielded it cleanly. 
and then just not able to get it down. And those are the hardest ones, kind of low and away as a holder. And you really what you want to try to do is just trap the football, but he tries to catch it before he traps it and not able to get it down. And the rush obviously gets there. Well, now it's an eight point game. And Tim, we talked about what a good job Georgia Tech did defensively. Syracuse, true to their habit, has been really good here in the third quarter where they've scored 29% of their points this year. In fact, they've now outscored opponents 86 to 39 in the third quarter. And Brent Key's team, who has had some trouble with second half leads, finds themselves only up a touchdown. And, and I would just say this as well, because of the penalty, Kicking off from the 50 yard line. Look, I think you do something here. Like, don't just boom it through the end zone. Do something to try to pin Georgia Tech if you're Syracuse, because just ultimately, when you look at how you're playing offense, field position is a huge factor in terms of where you're starting your drive because you can't get explosive plays in the passing game. So here is Denneberg as you see Horace Lockett going to the locker room. Denneberg going to squib it along the ground and Georgia Tech going to play it on a hop at the 27 yard line and that's where the Jackets will get started and lock it ejected and you see Allen score here and lock it 55 is involved. That's actually the previous play of the play after okay. it was Schrader under center they turn around and hand the football off you know I originally saw Reed. John Ray Reed, you know, have a reaction afterwards, and I thought maybe the flag was on him. I think he was reacting to the spitting in the flag. Haynes came in Georgia Tech. First down. Little throw across the middle. Rutherford to grab. Out at the 33. Pick up a six. So 55 is who they call it on block it. And now the throw here to Singleton. Quick throw out to the 34, just a couple there. So now all of a sudden it is third down and a full two for Haynes King. There have been a few quick three and outs by Georgia Tech. And so this is a really big, just with the momentum of this game. Tim, they had only run five plays in the third quarter prior to this series. And that's the fear, you know, kind of playing an offense like Syracuse's offense tonight. Yep. Here goes Haynes, and Jamal Haynes has the first down for the 38. Derek McDonald, the tackle. And Buster Faulkner's offense right on the hop here. This is Haynes trying to work his way through a crease. He'll break the 41 and toward the 42, maybe 43. McDonald again the stop. That'll be a pickup of almost five on first down. There's a look at McDonald. Sophomore who played for the great Alan Chadwick at Marist here in Atlanta. Making his 19th start as a member of the Orange. It's Blaylock in motion, pistol for Haynes King. Wanted to go deep, now going to throw it back foot and overthrow Rutherford. They wanted to get it to Singleton and he hesitated and by the time he was ready to pull the trigger, a mess of orange were there. It basically is all out pressure. They have opportunity down the field, but because the route doesn't really define itself quickly, King's got to hold on to the football. Man, did he take a shot up high and down low. Yep. We talked about it when we were here for the Carolina game. You cannot underestimate that young man's toughness, Tim. And now we get a stop here. Adam Savoie in discussion again. Previous play is under further review for a possible targeting foul. Oh. Well, I said, you know, up high and down low. I did think, you know, the quarterback in the pocket is considered a defenseless player. Oh, wow. And that's, you know, wow. that's what we're talking about. You know, it's not quite crown of the helmet, but that's not necessarily what needs to be in play. It's a defenseless player. It's forcible contact to the head or neck area. 
which that clearly is by Terry Lockett. Yep. And Terry Lockett could be in trouble here for the rest of the ball game with 2.06 to go in the third. This is a booth initiated review. Of course, don't forget you've got the replay folks here, and every play in ACC is reviewed, not just by the folks on site. We've got the command center with supervisor of officiating Al Riveron and his group that are gathered there. And the ACC's got their technology, and there's a live look into the command center in Charlotte. Adam Savoie, our referee. Fellows there have had a long day, by the way, in the Queen City. I guess every Saturday is a long Saturday. So while they sort this out, a couple things here, Tim. If, if this is indeed targeting on Henry Lockett, first down. 15 yards. The ejection of Lockett off that defensive line, and Georgia Tech's going to be somewhere over midfield. Yeah, the swing of field position feels like it's as big as anything. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. It's third down. And Brent Key wants to know. How, how's that possible in a word? Man, I, I understand his frustration. Quarterback in the pocket is a defenseless player. And forcible contact to the head or neck area, which that clearly was. Surprising. Well, we'll see what we can get on the determination there. Here is third down now, full five for the Jackets. Pressure coming, Okachukwu. Gets to King in the sack. He timed up the snap perfectly to Caleb Okachukwu for his third sack of the year. It's just not blocked correctly up front. They squeeze it and they, they basically leave a short edge. And Okachukwu just untouched all the way to Haynes King. First sack of the ball game for either school. And now Georgia Tech on its sixth play of the drive will punt. And it's an eight point difference and inside the final 90 seconds of the third. And a fair catch called for and taken by Donovan Brown. Don't forget all access the ACC life comes your way tomorrow. Six o'clock Eastern right here on ACC Network unprecedented look at Notre Dame's women's soccer, NC State's men's soccer, and Louisville field hockey. Always available for you on the ESPN app. And Brent Key is still steaming about the no targeting call on Henry Lockett. But his team now back on square defensively as the Orange takes over from its 26. And straight ahead. Maybe a yard on the play with Valari. And we have asked the ACC for a little more clarity on this. I just, I, a quarterback in the pocket who's being hit low, by the way, which is oftentimes a factor. I don't know how, you know, a helmet to the quarterback's helmet when he's protected in the pocket like that as a defenseless player. Is not targeting. Valari throws it on the perimeter. The catch is made. That is Gill. And Daryl Gill, seventh catch of the year. It'll still be short of the first down. It'll be third and a couple here for Dino Babers' team, who trails eight in the final half minute of the third quarter. I think as long as Syracuse is able to stay in some of these third and four or less is. Look, everything's on the table in terms of what they're trying to do. Spin it out to the perimeter or some of these power runs with Dan Villard. Single receiver to the far side. 
Right over by the Syracuse bench. Here's Valari going to keep it, and he's going to be hit. Got away, and now will be close to the first down. Just beyond the 35. I think they may mark him short, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. First Raider back in the ball game. We start the fourth with fourth and not very much for the Orange to keep this drive alive. Schrader trying to sneak, and I think he'll have it to the 37. I'm going to say this about Garrett Schrader. He's taken three snaps tonight, a kneel down, and a couple, you know, a handoff, and then a, a quarterback sneak. He's clearly not healthy because if he was, he'd be playing, but there is a selflessness of what he's done tonight, yep. and it certainly helped his football team. Yeah, the buy in has been across the board for Dino Baber's team to have any kind of chance. Certainly last Saturday in the Bronx and here tonight in Atlanta and now LaQuint Allen on a throw from Valari is knocked down shy of the 40 after a gain of three. So let's go back to the play involving Haynes King a moment ago with Lockett. The word from Charlotte is forcible contact to the head and neck area but no indicator for targeting. So that's why there was not targeting on the call. That's the word from the ACC command center. Second down and seven. Braden Davis is the quarterback here. And Davis going to flip it to Allen trying to get on the perimeter and a heck of a play. And that's Braylon Oliver. And there is a face mask against Syracuse here. It must have come on a block on the perimeter. And so now Brent Key has to make decisions. Because it'll be third down and 13 here. And we're early in the fourth. Take the yards and replay second down. I, that is what I would do because you're facing a non traditional offense. Boy, and Key is still trying to get some clarity from Adam Savoy here. Personal foul. Face mask, offense number 81. A penalty is declined. Result of the play is a third down. That's on Max Mang, who caught the touchdown pass last week, the tight end from Germany. Yeah, it's Max Mang right here. That's what I was saying on the perimeter, and his hand just gets up into the face mask. Really had some help from Juwan Price on the block, and it was unnecessary. So, third and 13 here. Tim, you would have taken the penalty, I, right? I would have taken it. And third 13 with the Dolphins that not good at throwing it right now is still okay, too. Now they're trying to keep it. That's Price. And he's just going to run behind his blockers to the 38. And then he gets pushed back. Mawala, the linebacker, first guy for the Jackets. Do you almost have to think about the decline given the unconventional system of offense, though, right? I mean, for sure. I mean, I, I think, you know, both sides of it obviously worked out for Brent Key in terms of what he just decided there. But ultimately, yeah, if you take a 15 yard penalty, second yeah. down, and, you know, it's second and forever, you might end up in the same spot. So certainly getting the football back, end result, good idea for Brent Key. Stonehouse, high punt, Blaylock, fair catch just outside Georgia Tech's 20. And Blaylock got knocked by, knocked down on a rub by. 41 yard punt, Jackets have it next. We pick up the phone because it's here offensively. Jackets by eight. And Dante Smith on first down. Gets a couple of yards to the 23. Tackle made by Lowry, the linebacker. 
Georgia Tech's got 263 yards, but Tim, not very much here in the second half because, quite frankly, the only touchdown they've scored was off the kick return fumble to start the third quarter on one play by Jamal Haynes. You know, obviously the turnovers, you know, have been a, a bit of a problem all season long, and certainly tonight. Here's King, little crossing route. This is Singleton, and he got slung around. That's Marlo Wax. Man, how good is Wax? My goodness. Leads him in tackles with 84. Sacks, tackles for loss. 35. He's starting tonight for the 36th consecutive game. He's an outstanding player. And you think about what he just did. You know, he's used to playing in the box, really. An inside linebacker. And that's, you know, on Singleton in space, a guy with a ton of speed. Third down for the Jackets. Four of nine tonight. And this is Rutherford trying to make something happen across the 25. He'll be brought down near the 26 and a half. Still five full yards. Syracuse has got 100 yards of offense here in the second half. Georgia Tech now just 56. And another three and out for Georgia Tech. Well, I gotta give some credit to the Syracuse defense, the way they're flying around. Elijah Clark just yep. basically. You know, kind of setting the edge, forcing everything back inside, and there's just been great effort. You mentioned, Wes, how Syracuse will go deep in terms of number of guys they'll play in the defensive side of the ball, and they're playing like they're fresh. Yep. Shanahan to punt. Snap to the youngster from Ireland. And a fair catch as for by Brown at the 35 yard line. Well, the orange has picked up the tempo. Elijah Clark with the stop on Rutherford. Chance to tie when we come back. Once you pick up an Arby's cheese steak, it's going to be scoring 58 in a row to beat North Alabama. But the loss of a superstar quarterback is going to keep you up tonight. Well, right, that's the right way to put it. Superstar at quarterback. And here's LaQuinn Allen, and he'll get a first down on the opening play of the drive for the Orange. Amari Harvey finally brings him down after a gain of 11. And the Orange is kind of building here now in half two. Yeah, and that is just LaQuinn Allen being really good in space because Andre White is unblocked. He's there to make a tackle, but Allen's speed able to get around him. He's had 100 yard nights in three of his last four, and he's on the verge of four of his last five, which would be his sixth of the year. Valari to throw, sets, fires. Damian offered the catch, plus territory to the Georgia Tech 42 yard line on the throw from Valari. It's actually a really good job. They fake the wide receiver go screen, but they have a safety deep this time. And so it's a nice adjustment, but Damian Alford is sitting it down and a flurry of seeing it. Valari is perfect. 13 of 13 for 60 yards tonight. All right, sign him up. <laughs> Let's go. And a Wildcat set here on first and 10 at Georgia Tech's 42. Throw to Allen. Two white shirts and then three, four, and five collapse. No gain on the play. Harvey was the first guy there playing the corner for Brent Key defensively. In all seriousness about the throws, look, Jason Beck has done an excellent job of scripting guaranteed completions. You know, they obviously haven't gotten big plays in the passing game, but I think it's enough just to keep you honest defensively, but it hasn't hurt Syracuse because the ball hadn't touched the ground. With Quinn Allen now with the in the backfield. Makes the toss, keeps it to the front side, has 10, has 15, and inside the 25 to the 24 goes Valari. It's just a counter, quarterback counter, if you will, or tight end counter for that matter, because he's the runner. But you pull the, the guard and tackle, and because of that little pitch action, they get the defense to move, get good angles to get the blocks. He's got 80 yards on 12 carries. Remember, they had three guys over 100 last Saturday at Yankee Stadium. Here's Allen. He'll try to find a crease and now bounce off. And here's LaQuinn Allen to the corner at the five. And Allen, did he get in? No. Out of bounds at the two. It's first and goal. 
And what an effort. It's a similar run just to the other side for Allen, but it's really what Allen does afterwards. And it gets wrapped up. Well, Miles Brooks has him, but he just bounces out of it. And just great effort for a guy that's carried the football a lot these last two weeks. Allen over 100 yards again. And you see just inside the threes where he stepped out. They put it outside the two. And here's Allen. He's got Big Perry with him in the backfield. Allen to the right side, took a hit, and scores. The head linesman throws his arms up. LaQuint Allen's in the end zone for the second time tonight. And it's Allen this time meeting Andre White at the line of scrimmage. It's just, you know, kind of one of those things they say low man wins. I think White was a little bit lower, but at the same time, that reach across with the football. But now you got to go for two, obviously, with the, the botched PAT after the last touchdown. And you would think that it's got to be something creative, Wes, with. You see through the fray. Does LaCroix Allen get in? Yes, there's the ball. So now for two and the tie. Syracuse who trailed three touchdowns after the opening play of the third period. And now the Orange trying to tie and they're still looking at this and now it's been confirmed by the ACC Command Center in Charlotte. Well now. They're going to. The field of a touchdown is under further review. Well we had a confirmation called. Here on the near side, Syracuse was getting ready to run the two point play, and all of a sudden, the replay coordinator on the field waved the play off, and now Adam Savoie will come here, take the headset, and we are under review on LaQuint Allen's touchdown. So obviously, the ball right there is across the goal line. So now, you know, as soon as that can be matched with whether there's any part of his body down with confirmation. Remember, it was ruled a touchdown on the field. You see that reaching across right there, then the knees down. Be a lot to overturn that, wouldn't it? You'd really have to put some angles together here with all the bodies that were colliding at the goal line. It's a heck of an effort by Syracuse. Now Georgia Tech did have turnovers Tim but the defense orange defense forced three and outs three and out. Yes. Yeah. And there was a period there after the Haynes King touchdown pass. After further review the ruling on the field stands. So the touchdown run of two yards for Allen. And a six play 65 yard drive in under three minutes. But you were saying after the Haynes King touchdown, I mean, it felt like it was yeah, just around. like, how are you going to climb back into this ball game? Just because you weren't getting much going offensively. And you know, I said a second, I think there's got to be something creative here, just with all the different guys we've seen take snaps for the two point play. See, Valari and Mang, the tight ends. Price has dropped in the backfield with Allen to tie the game. Snap to Allen. He'll go to his right and he'll throw and it is broken up. He was in the grasp of Tatum and then Clayton Powell Lee almost picked it. So the two point try no good. I think it's just a great job of Georgia Tech not allowing Syracuse to get to the perimeter. I don't think this was the design pass at all but Georgia Tech with a huge stop on the two point play to retain the lead. And he even has a credential, Tim. So nobody's I'm trying to figure out why he needed a field pass. Yeah, like well, I feel know. like, you know, if you if you pound for pound are just the greatest player ever in a program. Yeah. Can you just walk in? I would think, but you know, <laughs> kind of like you here, Wes. No, you know what I mean? Really, Come on. Not really. <laughs> do you need well, a credential? Is it necessary? It helped tonight. I was able to get up here to do the game with you. I had to 
show the credential, just like you did. All of our production team here tonight. All right, now Georgia Tech leading by two has seen 20 unanswered, Tim, by the Orange after that Jamal Haynes touchdown. And Georgia Tech, it feels like this thing is just slipping through their hands. They need to find a way to at least put a drive together. Empty set for King, wants to throw on first down. Quick shot. Broken up on the way to Singleton. There's the flag from deep center field against Elijah Clark, I believe. Dino Babers telling his team, calm down. Pass interference. Defense number five. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Clark guilty there, climbing the back of Singleton, I think. Gets there a little early. Just a you know, quick throw on first down, kind of a possession throw. Ball brings him inside a little bit, and Elijah Clark arrives too soon. There's seven and a half to go. You see the penalty numbers tonight. Winner goes to a bowl game. Singleton in motion. King the toss. This is Haynes. Got to fight through because all of his blocking was gone, and Jamal Haynes got to the 34 on the first down play. Bellamy the stop. And Georgia Tech has been here before. Brent Key's team in this first full season at Louisville, Bowling Green, Boston College, and Clemson. You see, the BC game was in the fourth. Tonight led 24 3. Syracuse is a free play for Haynes King. Now going to work to his right. He's going to throw it and it's caught. No, Singleton couldn't hang on at midfield. Penalty will be a neutral zone infraction offside on Lowry. Offside. Defense number nine. Five yard penalty. Second down. Jackets had a swing on the house here. Good job using the double cadence, you know, not being predictable with your snap count, and then trying to create a play knowing you have a free play. And Singleton, who's been just outstanding as a freshman, not able to bring that one in. So now, second and short, out at the 39. the ball to Haynes and he'll get the first down to the 43. Jamal Haynes and Georgia Tech. Three touchdown loss last Saturday at Clemson. They've won three of their last five as Key's team against the Syracuse team. We've lost five straight prior to the 15 point win against Pitt last Saturday at Yankee Stadium. Haynes King going to keep it on first down and get toward the 48. Pick up a five on first. It's a good read by King. Really an aggressive look by Syracuse defensively. Yeah, the opportunity to hand the football off or keep it. Keeping it the right decision. I would say this as we look at Rocky Long, he's going to start to be really aggressive here, which means there will be an opportunity down the field in the passing game. It's just a matter of do you time the call up correctly? That's going to be the challenge for Buster Faulkner. Second down. There goes King. Follows the block and will have the first down to the orange 46. And Tim with every first down, the clock starts to roll. And now Syracuse is not only battling the stop, they're battling time. Yeah, and what does their two-minute offense look like? Yep. I mean, do you do you even have one with the quarterbacks that you have on? Yep. You see what's at stake tonight. Georgia Tech trying to go to a bowl for the first time in five years. Syracuse trying to go to back to back bowls for the first time in 10. Pistol again. Going to hand the ball to Haynes. Terrific block. Haynes inside the 40 and a first down to the 35 before Barron makes the tackle.
Another you know, play with some misdirection in the backfield. Good downhill run. And what I was saying earlier about Jamal Haynes, who, you know, for a smaller player, a player who was a receiver at one point in his career, does run well between the tackles. And now, even though you're outside of four minutes, I think you're, you're in four minute offense mode. They're winding the clock on every play now. Play clock down to 10 already, and Haynes King is just getting set. Going to hand the ball to Haynes again. Jamal Haynes picks up seven or eight on first down here. And Jamal Haynes keeps chugging right along. Now on his average. And north of it on his 13th carry of the game with 86 yards. And I think that there was some communication from the coaching staff at Georgia Tech to Haynes King, like, hey, bleed that clock all the way down. Yep. Doesn't need to be at four or five when you snap the football. Let's be snapping that football with, you know, around two seconds left on the play clock each and every time now as we try to bleed the clock way, way down. Yep. Get a look at Lockett and that front for the orange here. Second down. Haynes King will keep it and he's got the first down to the 23 yard line. Tackle made by Isaiah Johnson. Zeke out of the secondary. That's a good read by the quarterback, Tim. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting. We opened the show talking about, you know, some of the decisions, 14 interceptions coming into tonight. You know, decision making out of Haynes King, but so much of his decision making too is in the run game with some of these read plays, and he's done a really nice job with it tonight. He's going to get everybody set here, and Georgia Tech's going to snap it with about two and a half to go in the game on a first down. Wouldn't be surprised Dino Babers goes to timeouts here. Here's Haynes King again. Right inside the 20 to the 19, and there's the first Syracuse timeout. 2.27 to go in Atlanta. Jackets trying to pick up bowl eligibility when we come back. Being the best it's tonight. And now here's King on the keeper, and he will score. Breaking might have preferred. He take a knee inside the five, but instead, 19 yards on the touchdown run. We said it a second ago, making good decisions in the run game. Hanks King does it again there. Once again, really well blocked by the guys up front for Georgia Tech. Nine plays, all on the ground. 75 yards and 519. King is thrown for two, run for another. And it's a nine point game with 222 to play in Atlanta. Again, it's that misdirection in the backfield. That pulls a lot of the Syracuse second level players towards it. And just the blocking up front. You know, with a, a defensive line that moves and slants as much as. Syracuse likes to do that. Sometimes you can get caught and gashed in the run game, and Georgia Tech does it there for a very important score. Tim, I've been impressed with the way Haynes Kane's bounced back. Huh? You know, we've talked about his physical toughness. Yeah. You know, he's fought through some injuries so far in his college career. I do think there's a mental toughness to him. You know, sitting there talking to Brent Key you know, before the game, you know, he talked about, I mean, King knew a lot about you know, the mistakes he was making. He was frustrated with himself that he was making those mistakes. And I think, you know, it's hard sometimes as a player to deal with that. Through the end zone on the kick. Orange from its 25, but how about our playmaker of the game presented by Honey Baked Ham? You know, I can't decide on the Haynes tonight. Hey, I mean, let's just combine them. Yep. 
Haynes came two touchdowns passing one rushing Jamal Haynes who looked like he had salted this thing away on the opening play of the third period from scrimmage but he also a big factor in the nine play 75 yard drive Luke McPhail by the way is appearing now for the first time 6 4 redshirt sophomore from Boston and he is the throwing quarterback for the orange McPhail first down intercepted that's Kyle Eifert. McPhail's first throw of the year for the Orange is intercepted. And maybe an indicator why they were running offense the way they were. Get into a two minute situation. It's hard to come off the bench. Just trying to throw a little in cut. Doesn't see Eifert there and throws it right to him. Damian Alford made the tackle, but Orange trailing nine were guilty of their second turnover. And 218 and two timeouts left for Syracuse here. And Dante Smith gets the call and he got tripped up. Don't forget Kelsey Riggs in the ACC huddle post game. I am quite sure that the head coach of the Yellow Jackets will join them on stage. I don't know if you saw a couple weeks ago. Brent Key was out there hat on backwards as if he had just come from the whiteboard in the post game meeting room. <laughs> well that was a pretty exciting game to yep. join the set after. And Imagine you got 45 of your former teammates here celebrating your 1998 ACC championship here tonight too. And by the way getting yourself to six wins which only means a lot to this program. Right yeah. now. And now Dante Smith. And, and that was a flag thrown on the play post whistle what do we have here from Adam Savoie's team with 121 to go you know Tim in some ways ironic that Georgia Tech is honoring the 98 team tonight George O'Leary their head coach is here of course he recruited Brent Key out of Clay Alabama brought him here to be part of that team in 98 that won the share of the ACC title, beat Notre Dame in the Gator Bowl. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number six. After this to the goal with an automatic first down. Tenth penalty on Syracuse. George O'Leary took over a team as the interim head coach at the tail end in 94, a team that went one and ten. 95, they won six games, didn't go to a bowl. They were five and six in 96, and then they went. Six and five and nine or seven and five and ninety seven, including a bowl victory over West Virginia. I don't have to tell you, the ninety eight team lost the opener to Boston College. Oh. And then only lost to Florida State the rest of the year. But he talked about that ninety seven to ninety eight team. And how many times yesterday in our visit, and both these coaches talk about bowl practices, wow. roster management, evaluations. So in a year where in an era where people talk about maybe the three games of the college football playoff and rightly so bowl games are vital to teams that want to keep getting better. There's a flag thrown after Dante Smith got inside the five. There are two flags out there now. And Georgia Tech for the first time since Paul Johnson's final team went to Detroit and played Minnesota in the Motor City Bowl is on the verge of going to a postseason event. And two fouls key. on the play, both by the defense. Personal foul, face mask, the zero. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number zero, his first of the game. That penalty will also be enforced half the distance to the goal. It's first down. And Georgia Tech is getting the players away from him. The field of play and putting them back to the bench. And I think Haynes King's going to take a knee here and 
He'll have to take two knees, I think, right? Well, yeah. just, well if Syracuse uses their timeouts, really, if they don't, they just should be able to just take one. Yep. And that's what's going to happen here. And there is Kavon Darton. And a lot of frustration on behalf of the Orange. Here at the tail end. Physical ball game from the start, though, tonight, Tim. Both knew what the stakes were. They did. I think they played hard because of it. And, you, know, you mentioned the bowls and what they mean. And I think the fact that getting the six wins for Brent Key, what that means for this team and so many players that haven't enjoyed much success here, getting a chance to do that, that's important. Brent Key, Dino Babers, a handshake. Georgia Tech is bowl eligible at six 